Psalm 70. O God, hasten to deliver me. O Yahweh, hasten to my help. Let those be ashamed and humiliated who seek my life. Let those be turned back and dishonored who delight in my hurt. Let those be turned back because of their shame who say, Aha! Aha! Let all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. And let those who love your salvation continually say, Let God be magnified. But I am afflicted and needy. Hasten to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. O Yahweh, do not delay. Short little psalm here, just five verses. And in it we see a lot of themes that we've seen so far in in the psalms. I mean, we see the imprecatory prayers, right? He's praying that those that are God's enemies would, would experience the evil that is due to God's enemies. It's not a bad thing to pray. Imprecatory prayers are fair game as long as we don't have malice in our heart that violates some sermon on the mount type of stuff right? but he also says you know like verse three let those be turned back because of their shame who say aha aha now that's a hebrew way of of saying you know neener neener essentially the the aha thing is like it's it's mocking it's um it's it's uh um the peanut gallery. It's standing over the top of somebody and delighting in their downfall or their embarrassment or whatever, right? So he says, all right, if they're going to call me out and delight in my embarrassment, may the devices of the wicked fall upon their own heads. Do it back to them. Give to them what they deserve. He's just asking for justice here, right? But let me just bring out one little thing here. He does the coolest thing that I've actually incorporated into my prayers sometimes because it really helps me, and I'll tell you why. Um, what he does is he starts with a thought and he ends with the same thought. And he states it a little bit differently, but really he's got a bookend to this prayer. And this is a mechanism of, of Hebrew poetry, right? Where you start with one thing, you end with roughly the same thing. And there are you know, technical names for it. I talk about that in sermons. In the short devotion, you just need to know, repeat at the end what you did at the beginning. He says, O God, hasten to deliver me. O Yahweh, hasten to my help. So in other words, I need you, please hurry. That's verse 1. Now the last verse, verse 5, I am afflicted and needy. Hasten to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. O Yahweh, do not delay. So he's got this God and Yahweh you know, pairing of titles in verse 1 and in verse 5. And he basically says the same thing. God, please hurry. Yahweh, you know, please hurry quickly. <laughs> that kind of thing. I need help and I need it now. If you don't show up, I got nothing. I need justice. I need help. And I need it with the quickness. So... I've incorporated that Hebrew poetic structure into some of my prayers in uh, when I'm praying about more the more disturbing, you know, um, events of life, the things that are really bugging me. And the reason that that's helpful for me to pray in in Hebrew poetic devices a little bit here and there, or to borrow from those devices, is because it keeps my prayers from. Uh, it, it keeps me from from wallowing essentially and just going over the same thing over and over and over again, right? So I'm I'm going to find something in the Bible that pretty well encapsulates my situation, and I'm going to start with that. And then in my prayer, I can go wherever I want. I can pray for good, for for you know people that need it. I can pray for justice for people that need it. I can pray for mercy. I can pray for provision. I'll go anywhere I want to, right? But then at the end, you just circle back around and you say, here's where I started and here's where I'm ending. And it allows me to say, and I'm leaving this with you, right? You spend as much time praying as you want to, but it, it does seem to give me kind of like a conclusion, which is an important thing in, in faith is to say, okay, now at this point we've interacted, I've made use of prayer. I've made use of the, the, you know, the, the blood of Christ by which we approach the throne of God. Thank you. That's great. Now I trust you and I'm leaving this with you. What this does is it functions to me at least is as a, as a period on a thought that, um, that allows me to sort of leave it there at the feet of God pivot and move on with whatever he's got me doing next. So um, I, I bring that to you just in case that helps you pray through difficult things as well. Uh, a little bit of, you know, um, a little bit of teaching from the structure of the prayer, not just the content of it. The Hebrew poets, these guys, they were good at approaching God, right? So sometimes we can we can yank from that buffet of, of techniques and it can be helpful for us. I'm not saying it adds, it like infuses some kind of supernaturalness. Um, well, prayer is supernatural anyway, but I'm not saying it's like some code that you crack that makes your prayers like more powerful. It's like high octane. It's NOS being injected into the engine of your prayer. It's, it's not like, we're not pagans, right? We don't manipulate God. But man, is it helpful for us just in pouring out our hearts and creating a little bit of order as we approach God where there may be disorder internally. You start with a quote from the Bible or a, 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 an idea from the Bible that encapsulates your situation. You pray whatever you want to. 
and then you close with the same thing. Leave it at the feet of the Lord until next time you approach him about it. I hope it's helpful for you as it is for me. Thank you.